welcome to another episode of At The Gigs, the show where we go to gigs. And we're at them. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Jared. And I'm the other one of your hosts, Kieran, and this is At The Gigs, episode 24. Wow. 24 you, episodes. That's a lot of episodes. Yeah, after 23, before 25. Right in that middle ground. Right in the middle. Yeah. It's um, almost a season of American television. Yeah, it is. Which goes on way too long, right? But this show doesn't. But American <laughs> television, what's <laughs> yeah, up with these marathon seasons? I know, it's you season know? after season. We like to give our audience liberal breaks by being like, maybe we'll be on next week, maybe we won't. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. It's up to us. Yeah, up to us. What did we do last week, Jerry? We, this week, we were last feeling... Week. What week is this? It is the same week as the gig was It on. is the same week, yes. Um, well, we were feeling kind of charitable this week, Kieran. We were. We were We were very into supporting men's health this week. Big yes. into it. Yeah, it yeah. was, um, well, as, as a lot of people know, um, this is the month of November, mm-hmm. um, also known as Movember. Indeed. Instead of this, the, 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 the new incarnation, which is... No, uh, not November. Um, yeah, it's like, which is, we're really taking a cultural dip, haven't we? Yeah, like, if people are just busy about not ejaculating enough. Like, like men's health is a way more noble cause yeah, go on, mustache. than, like, at the end of it. Don't beat off. I can't grow facial hair, but I did donate people. Yeah. But, yes, uh, but yeah, like, I mean, like, don't beat off. November. Like, imagine at the end of it, like, at the beginning of December, you're like, well, what did you achieve? Did you, yeah. did you help men's health out at all? No, I just ruined my prostate by not ejaculating at a regular basis. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Maybe yeah. there is a charitable aspect in November, but yeah. the fact that there's studies that say that it's bad for your prostate not yeah. to, it's kind of, there's nothing wrong with growing a mustache. It's like directly at odds with Movember. Yeah, with the cause. So, yeah, I, I do think, I think you're right. It's a cultural dip. Yeah, it's a form of idiocracy. Yeah. Where has society gone? Well, you know, well, I don't know where it's gone, but we're bringing it back. Yeah, we're bringing it back with culture. Yes, That's what we're bringing with a... Uh, very sporadic podcast. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, we went to Whelan's for <laughs> yes, their November the gig. Their no not November gig. <laughs> their, no, their Movember gig. <laughs> That's hilarious. Imagine if that was their gig. None of these bands have ejaculated this month, people. No one nuts this Give November. Give them applause. <laughs> but, yeah, so we went to Whelan's for their Movember gig. We did. And we saw... Quite frankly, a tremendous lineup. Oh, it was a super thing. I was, was super. Uh, I, you know, I would say beyond, you know, say maybe Forbidden Fruit or Pearl Jam, I think it, it was maybe the best lineup we've seen. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Fantastic. Wonderful. So I guess we'll give them a wee bit of a taste of what we've got coming up. We've got Rob mm-hmm. the Boar. Rob the Boar. Mm-hmm. One only. We got... We got a uh, Toshin. We got Rock from Drive Light. And we got... Kind of, kind of a rap rock? Yeah, I thought they had kind of a heavy... Also, a kind of spacier style. vibe from their online presence. So, I, yes. I, I don't know, very diverse. But yeah, and we got Echo Fold then. Echo Fold, yes. after. So up first, we got Rob the Boar. What do you think? I thought Rob the Boar was, was awesome. Um, he really got, it caught my attention. It really started off the night so well for us. Um, it seems like it was a band that he got together last minute. It's kind of just a do the show um, and I thought it was great really funky guitar stuff really nice groove to it I suppose yeah. it's quite different to the Halloween shows that's all quite um, uh, right. maybe Megason aside but you know just straight up like rock music it, it yeah. was uh, I suppose maybe just kind of refresh was refreshed our ears having a such a different kind of genre. It did, totally. Because, yeah, we we kind of got barrage, a barrage of, like, guitar, heavy guitar music, you know, mm. in previous gigs. But this one, yeah, like, it had this very kind of warm keyboard to it. Mm, it had this yeah. light, gentle, hi-hat drumming kind of... It had, like, a weird jazzy feel to it. Yeah, like it was funky. nice, silky smooth. It's very silky smooth. Yeah, silky smooth vocals, mm. uh, buttery. Buttery silk. Buttery silky. silk and buttery silk. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I thought uh, it was tremendous. Um, I thought there, there's just so much, uh, you know, potential here. I think I think yeah. it's a real like future future star. Star yeah. is born, if you will. I will. Uh, also, you know what I liked? I think it's an important but little kind of feature. I liked that he introduced the band. 
Oh yeah. Like it's a very like big time thing to do. Yeah. Like, to say, oh no, on guitar, we got this. Yeah, it brought me back to yeah. being on the big gig. Yeah, I think it's like an important feature to include. Like it's the little things that yeah, add treat to it the like it's a, Yeah. It's a show at any level. Yeah, I can't definitely. say anything bad about them. I'm scraping no. the barrel to say something <laughs> yeah. bad. I can't say it. No, we're uh you can say we're red hot for this band. We are not. Ice cold. Ooh. We are Fuck, oh, missed it. Oh. Get on. Oh. Red, red Hot. Red Hot. <laughs> red Hot. The yes. record show. Red yeah. Hot. So, actually, why not let the record show? Ah, I see yeah. what you did there. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we should uh, give them a wee taste or rub the boar. Yeah. So, so here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have um, Toshin. We do have Toshin. Bring in the kind of soul funk to the night. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it Proper was... soul. The vocals were astounding. Yeah, it was great. Powerful. It was really... Yeah, it was just <laughs> silky smooth. No. It, it, yeah, it was nice to um, keep going down the sort of the road that Rob DeBoer started. With that, yeah, that funky group paved by Rob DeBoer. <laughs> yeah. Godfather of the genre. <laughs> The Godfather of Soul, Rob the Boar. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I um, yeah, like like I saw the sax coming out, and I was like, I was just so ready for more of this. Like I, I yeah. was, you know, kind of uh, on like a kick of not going to derivative guitar bands. Really, you know, mm. I just wanted something different, and they brought like this really interesting soul kind of sound. Yeah, it was yeah, it was funky. But there was a, yeah, it was like a James Brown band. Like there was just so many players. Yeah, within it and. So many backing singers. Yeah, and, backing yeah. singers. That's like a cool feature that I mm. like for these kind of things. You know, like every they're all like powerful singers, but one's really powerful. <laughs> I am the most. Powerful. I am the best. Uh, let's make no bones about it. I am the singer <laughs> here. But uh, but yeah, no, I um, I kind of hurt back to I don't know maybe uh, Motown soul vibe from mm. it. Yeah, it was yeah, cool. definitely. Yeah. I really registered with the audience. The they audience did a, was. Just, Dancing away. A cool cover of, I believe, Aretha Franklin Change. I think it's called Change. Oh, yes. You know yeah. 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 Well, you know what I mean anyway. But yeah, yeah no, it was a uh, pretty kick ass. Uh, and yeah, the audience were going fucking nuts. Yeah. The, Wonderful uh, atmosphere. Maybe some of the greatest participation I've seen yeah. at any gig. It was like just really nice to see so many people so happy in the name of men's health. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, they were Amen. joyous, like just uh, dancing, you know, uh, singing along. Everybody was happy. No, I really think on a lineup you need a, a, a danceable band because I feel, um, yeah, it just depends. It just it makes the night kind of feel smoother. It does, yeah. Than yeah other fundraisers, yeah. I think like, oh, oh, Howley Night. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it was all just on the same sort of basement rock yeah, vibe, yeah. And, which is great, but yeah, it's just really nice to be in a fun, dancey Yeah, just to like, yeah, like, and I think, like, broadly, we got to see just a lot of great musicians play, like, a lot of things we wouldn't usually see. We wouldn't yeah. usually see a sax at these things. We wouldn't usually see a lot of keyboard, actually. We wouldn't mm, even see that. Yeah, so, yeah it was, it's cool just to see uh, a heck of a band. I was very pleasantly surprised with the lineup. Without further ado, will we give people some Toshin? The motion I've got, the notion. I've got some notions. I've given them some notions. And they're good notions. Good notions, yeah. Uh, yeshins, even. Yeshins. Not nose. Nose. Oh, yes. So, yes, here's uh, Toshin. <laughs> Next up on the bill was Drive Light. Heck yeah, it was Drive Light. Bring in the kind of more outwardly rock presence to the night. Yeah, I can agree with that. It was um, outwardly, outwardly, not inwardly, outwardly. No, it was more of an, an outwardly rock presence. Yeah, uh, yeah it was um, had um, that nice 
part of rock, you know, your meat and potatoes, just oomph. Yeah, but at the same time, though, I I would set them apart from previous kind of all guitar things. Thumper. Like they had Thumper, yes. <laughs> I don't like Thumper. Thumper. He doesn't like them at all. I really don't. I think they're the Michael Bay of the Irish indie scene. Yes. People flock to them in their thousands. Millions. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and the movies are bad. The songs are bad. The songs. So yeah, there's your there's your answer negativity, guys. It's all just CGI. We're anyway. all just all just empty CGI Megan yes. Fox flying across the screen by a big car. Yeah. That's what you get when you see Thumper. Not good for the soul. These were all good for the soul. Drive light are good for your soul, I think. Exactly. I, I think. really like um, their song Take Two yes I, re- yes I like that a lot it had it, it, I didn't want to say the word funk again so no. I was going to say because uh, oh. I feel like we just said funk 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 funk, funk. yeah so bleep 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 we're, we're almost in a funk, funk. yeah talking exactly. about so much funk too much funk so I'm going to say they had kind of Red Hot Chili Peppers esque guitar mm. which is interesting because I kind of got like uh, Monarchy of Roses kind of style what was it disco what's it called disco nightmare that's what they called monarchy Rose. oh kind of disco sabbath like yeah. disco sabbath is that the right term do you get that that was the original song title really yeah that makes sense that would have been better yeah that would that would have been so <laughs> better album would have been better better album would have been better too but that's not to say that i actually quite like that song on that album i picked yeah. a good song deliberately off a terrible album yeah but yeah no uh, i thought drive light were um really cool I, i'd see them again yeah great yeah, yeah and it's yeah, uh, and actually, if, if if anyone is interested in listening to their music, she's put a picture in my head. I know I have no defense. Let's hope that I don't regret what I say. Make her my woman. That's the thrill. That's the aim of the game. I've got my eyes on you. I've got my eyes on you. Now, on to the next segment of the show. Music news. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we really need a graphic for that. Yeah, we got to put something in. Yeah. Would people prefer if we had, like, <laughs> the weekend update style where we each had, like, a... Oh, like, yeah, the thing and the guy just talks. Then is there a pressure to write jokes for each news, each news piece? Because the beauty of news is that, like, it doesn't have to be funny. We're just saying the facts. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. Well, anyway, answers on our... <laughs> for now... Answers you... on our Facebook page or our Twitter page or our Instagram, Instagram page polls, or anything, really. Anything that... Because we have <laughs> online presence. Uh, oh, it's there. YouTube comments, even. Fuck it, we'll even take yeah. that. That's cesspool of negativity that is the YouTube comment section. Yeah. Well, anyway, anyway, yes, music news. Enough yeah. of that. Well, uh, first up on the bill is Ennio Morricone, the famous film composer, has turned 90 years old. 90 years old. And it's interesting. I don't know many 90 year olds that are announcing a Tree Arena tour on February 15, 2019. No, the only one I know is Ennio Morricone. Yeah. <laughs> I know one, and it's Ennio Morricone. Uh, God, that's amazing. Like, that, you know, do you think the love of the music will carry you through it? Like, because I know, hmm. you know, we Leonard Cohen, like, he toured till very late in his life. Yeah. If not right to the end, I actually, I'm not sure, but, uh, like, he had to do it because his fucking manager fucked him. Yeah. Really. Like, uh, Ennio Morricone, do you think he just loves it that that much? <laughs> he just, just has this, uh, had so many bad managers. Yeah, that he's, like, he got royally <laughs> fucked. Oh, uh, Mamma Mia, another bad manager. <laughs> <laughs> if only I was Did Sergio at... Leone fuck him, up, fuck him over in the rights to yeah. all of the soundtracks? Uh... But no, I think that is an interesting point. Um, they say the same with people that suffer from Alzheimer's. They can retain music. There was a great documentary about them. Um, oh, who was that country singer again? Uh, Glenn Campbell. Oh, okay. But he, he had terrible Alzheimer's, but he actually was able to do a tour... He was able to remember the songs and like it wasn't perfect and you know yeah there were problems ridiculous. but he had way more comprehension of playing music than he did remembering you know where his car keys were. That's fascinating. So there is something uh, internally unlocking it. Um, but yeah, I think from an age point of view, everyone worships the Stones. But that's quite impressive. The Ennio Morricone, a nine like twenty year old. years on the Stones. <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> that's, and I mean, uh, there, there's one side where, of, of course, Mick Jagger is, you know, very athletic, and there's that interaction. But yeah. this guy is keeping an eye on like an entire orchestra. Yeah, that that is. 
that's, concentration. That's like that is complete love of music. That's yeah. that's admirable. Uh, I wonder how elaborate the tour is. We only have the three arena date, but I wonder is it like a big European gig or what is it? I think it is. Yeah, it'll be the European dates and. Nice. Well, yeah. I mean, happy birthday, Ennio Morricone. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Marconi, Morricone. How do you say it? I say Morricone. Marco. Okay, that's good. That's what I said that too. <laughs> yeah, that's a relief. Uh, up next, uh, for Irish music fans, we, not <laughs> yeah. because the re- this whole show is for music fans all around the world, but uh, Golden Discs is opening three new stores, one in Dublin, one in Kilkenny, and one in Limerick. I, I, I'm astounded that this thing is still in business. <sighs> Me too. I uh, It's weird because I feel like every other year <laughs> Golden Disc is going into liquidation or it's closing or it's... Yeah, know, like what, what uh, was the deal between... Uh, the difference between Golden Discs and HMV? Cause I, yeah, well, I think Golden Discs were wise because they leapt on the vinyl craze. Because I know last year... How was it last year? Yeah, I think it was last year they made the bulk of the profit from vinyl. Yeah. And, like they have this like vinyl reward system where oh. like every 15 euro you spend you get like 30 euro off if you get like 10 oh fast stamps yeah so uh i think that's wise marketing on their part because vinyl really is the only thing they have to offer in this like increasingly digital world you know yeah i i haven't bought like anything any kind of cd yeah in it's that just, sense it's like, all online like yeah. it's 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 and like i get like not owning hard copies is is uh you know, it's like sad. It's not good to see shops like close or whatever. No. But uh, there was a point where you have to help yourself, and like some of their prices are kind of ridiculous. Well, that's why I was surprised Golden Discs was still in yeah. business because H&B actually had offers. Golden Discs was like a rip off. It's always going to be expensive. Uh, what do you think of Terra Records actually? Because that is quite expensive, and mm. that has never had any real issues. Like yeah. in fact, they moved from this is a few years ago now, but they moved from uh, Wexford Street, was it? Yeah. Uh, to like a giant place on yeah. Nassau Street or uh, uh, Street? Street, yeah. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, so like it's strange, you know. I wonder is it just uh, loyalty, but Golden List seems to just come in and out like what's the <laughs> yeah. loyalty they're not around enough to be loyal to you know no, they yeah. appear in new places <laughs> randomly it's just phantom company it's weird uh, but anyway 30 more employees that's always good yeah. 19 lo- wait 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 19 locations and 18 concession stores yes they have um, three new stores what the fuck is this they uh, the, the, that adds to them having 19 locations oh I see and also the, the 80 concession stores are like within Tesco Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah that's always my, a bummer. Why? Like Tesco Mobile? Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't like being in Tesco. <laughs> of all the um, supermarkets, I just like Tesco the least. Yeah, like, it, it just always felt so big and cold. And yeah. Just, just bright. I'm like Tesco Larger. Tes- oh, God. I just yeah. never even buy that stuff. I'd rather like the kind of... You know, like in Aldi and Lila, like uh, beyond Galahad, but they have their own like brands that are at least they look pretty. Yeah, you know, they got like vague. nice labels. Yeah. They're kind of cool. So yeah, that's good. The like, golden this is <laughs> yeah, it's coming back. So yeah, if anyone needs their Christmas shopping, you know where to go now. <laughs> yep, you do. You go to Dublin, Kilkenny, or Limerick. <laughs> <laughs> so on to our trademark closing light piece of news. What yeah, because you, you know it's a heavy world out there. You got to keep it light. Got to keep smiles on faces. That's it. And this man has quite a smile. Quite a big smile. And this woman has quite, quite a, a smile. Yeah. So. So yes, if you couldn't get the news from that, yeah. that riddle. <laughs> <laughs> um, recently, Dave Grawl has come out and saying who he would like to portray him if he was the subject of a biopic. And that is Star of the Shining. And Popeye, <laughs> Shelley Duvall. <laughs> Did you ever see Popeye, Robin Williams, and no. Charlie Yeah, I saw it years ago. I don't remember which one. <laughs> it was a poor reference. Box really. office match. <laughs> but yeah, so Dave Grohl would like Shelley Duvall to play him in a movie of his life. Yeah. Do you think he's going for a I'm not there Bob Dylan art house, you know, when Kate Blanchett oh, played him and stuff like that? That's an interesting... Or do you think he's just being goofy? I think he's just ripping on having a horse face. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah. that's it. And then, like... The, <laughs> a horse face. <laughs> couple of horse faces. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, yeah. Like, I mean, that's, there, there's a definite resemblance, I yeah. think. Uh, he then went on to say, because presumably The Shining is the only movie he's seen, <laughs> he would like... Uh, Jack Nicholson to play uh, <laughs> Taylor Hawkins. <laughs> and I'd like the kid from The Shining to play Nate Mandel. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, the Jack Nicholson thing is real, though. You, uh, yeah, God, it, it, it's such silly news. You just like, pull it in someone's ass. Yeah, like, it's so it's just, 
<laughs> yeah, it's like um, at least the fifty cent thing was last week was like just outwardly absurd. Yeah. This one's just kind of like, what are you talking about, Dave Grohl? Um, but on on that note, would you warrant seeing a biopic about the Foo Fighters or Dave Grohl? Um. Uh, no, really. I, I, but to be honest with you, I have very little interest in biopics to begin with. I, no. I just feel like there's a certain brand that are just so geared towards give the main actor an Oscar, and it's just it just yeah. feels kind of you know a little empty. Okay. But I would actually see a stunt casting of Shelley Duvall as Dave <laughs> Grohl. I would totally go to see that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean. I'm no interest in Bohemian Rhapsody. I have no, no interest in uh, Everlong, whatever they call it. <laughs> yeah. <like. laughs> what would they call it? What song would they call it? Oh, God. Best of You. Oh, uh, all My Life. No one, no one. <laughs> oh, my God. This that's is all my what fucking they life. Call it. Yeah. Like, no one then that fucking call it our laundry or some shit. Yeah, probably yeah. something stupid. Something ridiculous. What, what was. um. Foo Fighters tribute act we saw was called Erlandria. Yeah. That was weird. That was very bizarre. Peculiar name to call it. But Irlandria. if people did want to see more Foo Fighters content, the documentary Back and Forth is actually very good. It is very good. And, like, Dave Rawls proved himself to be quite an apt uh, documentary director. You know, yeah. Sound City's good. Uh, Sonic Highway, if the album wasn't garbage, the documentary <laughs> yeah. would have some value. Quite an uh, undertaking. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think generally, yeah, like, biopics are stupid. Because uh, off- often the band already has a good documentary entry about the band yeah, so, yeah you know it's not it's it's unwarranted didn't our uh, film studies teacher long ago say if it can be a documentary why make it a drama oh yeah yeah which Fuck back then i guy. thought was bullshit <laughs> 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 and now i still kind of think it's bullshit but it's a quote that's supports our it's point it's well you know we're we're running out of time you know that our sponsors um have only bought paid for this amount of uh, this broad, small window yeah this tight broadcast yeah so i'm gonna have to say that's all for me i'm gonna have to say that's all for me but we'll be back next time with yeah. another episode yeah. about the gigs episode 25 probably yes it will yeah. be so i've been kieran and i've been jared and this is at the gigs episode 24 goodbye so long